Hello and welcome to Horizon HealthWorks, brought to you by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey. I'm Laura Jones. We're at the Liberty Science Center in Jersey City, where the next generation of scientists and engineers are inspired. In this episode, in recognition of Alzheimer's Awareness Month, a new program that unleashes creativity to reduce isolation and build meaningful connections. We'll get an inside look at XPRIZE, a $5 million competition supported by Horizon to develop a faster, cheaper, and easier COVID-19 test. And dive in to learn more about diabetes and what you can do to prevent it. And New Jersey Insurance Commissioner Marlene Caride tells us what we need to know about buying health insurance this year. But first, located in Liberty State Park, the Liberty Science Center, which just reopened on Labor Day, is home to the largest planetarium in the Western Hemisphere. 110 species of live animals and is aimed at encouraging the next generation of scientists, doctors, and engineers of every age. I love this place. It's 300,000 square feet of things that can stimulate you. I love the infinity climber, our climbing structure out there that keeps kids really physically active. I know that young people, you're really working on encouraging them to get an interest in medicine. What we try to do is get kids immersively turned on to science and healthcare and medicine. And then we hope that maybe a switch flips in their head and they get really excited about this because they make an emotional connection to it. So we have a whole hall of live animals, 110 different species, and many of them have deep science or medical stories behind them. And then we bring them out on the floor of the center and demonstrate them with guests. So horseshoe crabs, for mm. instance, that yeah. Fred has here. This is one of evolution's great gifts to our planet, and it also turns out to humanity, because they have blood in them that was noticed early on when researchers were um, you know, handling horseshoe crabs, that the blood coagulates, that's a fancy word for clotting, when it experiences bacteria, okay? So now we actually milk, the and they have blue blood, it's kind of amazing. Ooh. We milk the blood, meaning not me or Fred, but uh -huh. uh, pharmaceutical researchers, and they use that to make sure that vaccines are free of bacteria. So even now, as everybody knows, we're trying to develop a COVID-19 vaccine, so many of them are being tested with horseshoe crab blood to make sure that there is no bacteria. That's incredible. And these horseshoe crabs have been around, they were around before dinosaurs. And what's so interesting is that we cannot yet, meaning medical science, duplicate effectively what horseshoe crab blood does in terms of purifying vaccines. I understand you have live surgery and I'm thinking, what the heck is a live surgery and how do I get tickets to that? <laughs> so the program we do with six different hospitals in New Jersey and we have, through live two-way video conferencing, you broadcast from an operating theater to here and into schools and now kids' homes who are part of this program, you get to watch an entire surgical procedure and converse with the surgical team during the procedure, okay? When I interviewed for this job, I said, what? Patients allow this? No patient has turned down the surgeon. Of course, we need really? their consent. People do a double take, but then they realize if my surgeon is confident enough to do this in front of a live audience, it must be for me. So we have lots of programs based on that, and that's the reason to come here. The actual watching the surgery has to be done through one of our classroom programs for ethical reasons. A surgical society wants to make sure it's for educational purposes and that there wouldn't be any voyeurism involved. So that's a more controlled thing. But Alejandro can show you some of these. You want to demonstrate, Alejandro? Absolutely, yeah. What are cool. some of the things that we're, what we're seeing here? Absolutely. So one of the big things about live from surgery is talking about the technology that they use in the surgical room. So one of the really more common tools that you can see throughout all of our programs is this really cool instrument called the Bovi. So as you can see, it's sort of like a, a little plug in the back here. So it's actually hooked up to a machine that emits an electrical current. So think of it as a uh, regular scalpel, except you're using electricity to heat up the tip to cut and cauterize at the same time. And this is what you'd find in an operating room? A common tool in an operating room. So kids get to not only watch, but they get the real deal equipment too. Correct. In a safe way, I'm sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And so our whole mission is to demystify the medical world and kind of bring it down to a more accessible level for students of all ages to get the feel of you know what surgery entails, what careers they can get into if they have an interest in healthcare, 
and also, you know, talk about uh, pathways not only within the surgical room, but there are a lot of different careers outside of the surgical room that are just as important in making sure the patient comes out just fine. This is really just amazing. Paul, have you been able to kind of eavesdrop on any of the students after they experience a live surgery to get their reaction? Definitely. I mean, many have decided to go into the medical profession just based on that experience. Our kids that have just gotten a driver's license decide, you know, I want to become an EMT. You know, uh, I mean, it's a great program. And you meet all the people in the operating room. So when we're dealing with children in New Jersey, particularly students from some of the more vulnerable communities, and they see that and they think, oh my God, I'm in 11th grade. If I can stick it out one more year and get into that program, I can have an incredible job. And by the way, we have a shortage of people in New Jersey going into those jobs. So our programs are directly connected to that. I love it. You have young people who are doing something that is enjoyable, but they don't even realize that it's educational, right? Definitely. <laughs> you come here, it's part entertainment, but there's a deep learning element, and that's why people should come out to Liberty Science Center. Thank you so much, Paul. What a wonderful way to inspire the young at heart. Now, this is Mickey, a green wing macaw, and he's very interested in our next guest, Dr. Himanshu Bhatia, a semifinalist in the $5 million XPRIZE rapid COVID testing competition, sponsored in part by Horizon. What do you say, Mickey? What they are looking for is to bring rapid COVID testing to market, which, as I see, is a huge need for the day. And you are one of the finalists. It started out how big? So we are in the semifinal at this time. Well, I want to hear a little bit about how it works, but I think sometimes people might think rapid test, does that mean it's going to be more expensive than a traditional? Depending on the type of technology that's being used in the rapid test, it may be expensive or not. What we have what, and what we have created in Recover Healthcare is an inexpensive technology. Our device is expected to cost less than $10 per test, which is less than half of the comparables at this time. Can you tell me about the mechanics? How does this work? So ours is a very innovative and new technology. We started working on this about a year ago, looking at different saliva diagnostic markers. When COVID came about, we wanted to see if we can apply the same technology for COVID use case. Compared to a lab-based test, there is no special processing needed for the sample. And also using saliva, it's, it's a very convenient way of handling the specimen, not just for the user, but also for the tester. Right, people now most often have either experienced it or see those big old cotton swabs coming at your nose. And even if you are patient and try not to get too squeamish, it still is kind of poking around and making you uncomfortable. This is not like that. That is correct. And really the hallmark of our technology is the sensitivity that it has. But as research has progressed, they've seen that saliva also has the presence of viral particles. And that's, what, that's exactly what we are detecting with our technology. And it's far easier to get a saliva sample than that nasal swab. Doctor, could you show me, walk me through how this works? Sure. So our device is a very simple to use device. It's a handheld device. And the way it works is that uh, we have a salivary swab that we provide with the, set, with the device. Uh, you take the swab, put it into your mouth, and within a couple of seconds, it absorbs enough saliva. And within five minutes, you'll get a readout of the results. So in five minutes, is this going to be just as effective, ultimately, as the, the nasal swab? We know that it already works, and we have excellent results in the lab. And what we want to do is not just bring another test to the market, but one that is highly accurate, that is really quick to use, and that is comparable to the gold standard method that's out there. So doctor, what inspired you? What was the issue you saw or heard from patients for medical community? Was there an issue that you were saying, mm, this isn't working? What I saw was that, that the existing point of care technology was really dated. So that was really the uh, need for a better point of care technology. Thank you, Dr. Batia. We're gonna check in for an update next time. Now, I want you to meet Erwin here. He is a jungle carpet python, one of 110 animals who are featured in the Wild About Animals exhibition. Stay with us, we're gonna hang out. We'll be right back. In uncertain times, you need someone who has your back. 
That's why at Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, we make sure our health plans have all the benefits you need. More ways to get care virtually. More support for your mental health, too. More tools on your phone. All in a range of health plans so you and your family can find just what you need. And we can help. Because everyone should feel like someone has their back. Not just in uncertain times. All the time. Welcome back to Horizon HealthWorks. We are at the Liberty Science Center in Jersey City, and this is the Infinity Climber, a first of its kind suspended climbing space. Great for exercise and part of the center's goal of reducing our nation's childhood obesity epidemic. Children with obesity are four times as likely to develop type two diabetes, for example. Joining me now is Janine Salenti, Executive Director of the Diabetes Foundation. Diabetes is a chronic condition where your body is not metabolizing your sugar, and when you have high levels of sugar in your blood for a long period of time, it can impact your major organs like your heart, your kidneys, and your eyes. Today, approximately 10% of New Jerseyans have diabetes, and about 36% are pre-diabetic. Some signs of pre-diabetes might include frequent trips to the bathroom, changes in skin color or skin tags, carrying extra weight around your middle section, trouble sleeping, and a history of blood sugar problems. Can you talk about some of the programs that you do? And you work with Horizon, I know. And you know, what are those other connections that you're making to get the patient on the right path? We have three major programs. One is called just get support. If you need medication, if you need an A1C test, if you need transportation to your doctor appointment, or if you need um, supplies that help you test your blood sugar. We will give that all to you for free with thanks to our sponsors and our partners. We also have education programs. One is called Self Manage, and what that does is it provides all sorts of information to help you manage your blood sugar. And then the third program is about education as well. It's called Live Healthy Nutrition and Physical Activity, Exercise Tips and Education, and all three can help you manage your health. And you have a bottle of water with you. I do. Can you tell me uh, about how that can help? Absolutely. Well, water is important to everyone. It's essential for everyone. But for people living with diabetes, you're, you tend to get dehydrated a little bit more quickly. And when you're dehydrated, it, um, it impacts your blood sugar. So helping yourself drinking a lot of water, keeping hydrated will help you manage your blood sugar. A lot of people will think, I don't need to go to the doctor. I'm being a hypochondriac. No, I'm not going to bother my. I'm not going to bother somebody about this. One of the things that the diabetes recommends always is when you go to your annual doctor visit, ask them to test your A1C. Not paying attention to your diabetes, not trying to control your blood sugar, may not feel. You may not feel sick or bad every day, but in the long term, it can really impact your overall health. Our motto is diabetes is hard and getting help shouldn't be. Imagine you wake up every day, you have to think about what you put in your mouth, you have to think about testing your blood sugar, you have to think about what you're carrying with you. If you have diabetes, it takes 56 minutes out of your day extra just to manage your care. But the truth is, the time you take that's extra now is going to really help eliminate what major complications you can have in the future. Thanks, Janine. Now, as Russ and I make our way through the Infinity Climber, Believe it or not, shopping for insurance in New Jersey during open enrollment isn't nearly as tricky as this is, thanks to our next guest. Oop, watch your step there. It seems that across the country, insurance rates are going up, but in New Jersey, that is not necessarily the case. What are you and the governor doing to make insurance more affordable? Governor Murphy, when he took office, made, um access to health care a priority. He has taken numerous actions um, to improve access to health coverage, including the creation of the reinsurance program and instituting the shared responsibility uh, requirement. These two actions have led to rates that were 22% lower than they would have otherwise been. Health insurance can be incredibly expensive, but is there help for people? And if so, what does that look like? 
We've established um, our own health insurance marketplace, which is called Get Covered New Jersey. By taking back and having our own marketplace, we're going to have, for the first time ever, more financial assistance for New Jersey residents. Aside from the federal tax credits, the governor just two months ago signed a law that allows for state subsidies. And so there is much more financial help out there for our residents. Um, eight out of 10 have qualified, will qualify. And so when you see individuals that have to make a decision of can I afford to have health coverage for myself and my family or put food on the table? The, the knowledge that you're making it affordable for them so that they don't have to make that decision. We have the gold, silver, and bronze levels. And what is the difference in these different categories? The metal categories are based on how the consumer and his or her insurance company split the cost of health care. So, um, for example, the gold plans have a higher monthly premium, but pay more of your total cost of health uh, care. You pay less when you need care. Um, your silver plans have a mid-range uh, premium and generally lower costs when you need care. Um, and your bronze plans have a lower premium and pay less of your total cost. And you would wind up paying more when uh, you need to get your care. So it's definitely a personal decision, but they really should take the time to look at each of those plans and determine how it fits their life. How exactly do people shop for insurance? What do they need to know? It's a good question. Thank you for asking that one. Um, in the past, um, folks have used healthcare.gov to purchase insurance during the open enrollment. But as I've mentioned, this year we've transitioned to our own state-based exchange, to our own marketplace, Get Covered New Jersey. We have a, um, a tool, a comparison plan tool, where they can look at the different plans, look at the cost, and it will also let them know if they're eligible for financial assistance. The tool is very easy to use. The comparison plan tool is very, very easy to use. It'll take them a few minutes and they'll be able to have a better idea of the plans that are out there. And that is where folks this year will go to enroll. One of the things that I would stress though, is that we would be offering much more benefits than the federal government is at this point. Again, the open enrollment uh, is twice as long, uh, more financial aid. We have the state subsidies on top of the federal credit that they would be getting. Uh, we have our own call center, which I'm very proud of. It's here in New Jersey. It's, you know, staffed by New Jerseyans to help New Jerseyans. Uh, so there's that personal touch, which I'm very proud of. Is there anything people need to have with them when they start to enroll? My hope is that they will go on our website and use the comparison tool and, and, and uh, determine what plan best suits them. There will be information that will be asked, um, for example, uh, information about each of the persons in their household who need coverage, um, the best estimate of their income for 2021 um, for the household to determine if and how much financial help they are eligible for. If you're an individual um, and you're making about 50000 you would more than likely qualify for assistance. And if you are a family of four, and you're earning up to $104,000, you will also uh, qualify for additional assistance. I have always agreed with our governor's philosophy that access to quality, affordable health insurance is a right. At least it makes me feel really good that I'm helping uh, all New Jerseyans by allowing them uh, access, easier access to a health plan and more accessibility by way of financial assistance. After talking to the commissioner and trying to walk on the infinity climber, yeah, I, I think fine insurance is a little bit easier. Stay with us. Horizon HealthWorks continues after this. What's out there? Hungry black holes, spinning quasars, and a universe of mystery still to be discovered. Take a spectacular voyage through the cosmos at the Jennifer Chalstey Planetarium, the largest planetarium in the Western Hemisphere, now open at Liberty Science Center. See the wonders of deep space on a massive dome screen. Take an interplanetary
planetary joyride and discover the haunting beauty of deep space. The new Jennifer Chalstey Planetarium is at Liberty Science Center in Jersey City. Get your tickets at lsc.org. Welcome back to Horizon HealthWorks. I'm in the Jennifer Chalstey Planetarium. It is the largest in the Western Hemisphere. Last year, NASA conducted experiments in space researching nanoparticle therapies for Alzheimer's disease. Joining us here on Earth is Ann Bastings, who developed a novel approach to help engage people with progressive memory loss conditions like Alzheimer's. I started this work 25, 30 years ago. Um, when really my personal connection was my grandmother who had had a stroke and lost the ability to speak. Um, yet she was very a, a powerful woman and she taught me that really everyone has a story to tell inside of them, but that it's up to us as listeners to figure out how to listen that story into being. And now of course, if with time, my mother's experiencing dementia. So it's a whole new way for me to experience what I've been trying to invite other people to do over the last 25 years. What has been the reaction from family members? You know, they really tell us that this is a joy, that sometimes family members and family caregivers um, can experience a lot of loss and challenge and grief during the day. But that moment when they shift and open up uh, expression and connect in that way, it can shift the tone and you can feel as though you're connecting again with someone that you thought might have been lost to you. Can you tell me what is creative engagement? Creative engagement is really simply inviting someone into expression and meaning making. And for people like people experiencing memory loss and their caregivers who might be shut out of that experience, the, that invitation can be a lifeline into relationship and back into community and connection. It really sounds like a non-traditional approach to making that connection. Can you explain a little bit more about how it works? Sure, we teach people to kind of see past the loss. We can be stopped by the shock of memory loss. We teach people to recognize the strengths and to build on those to make meaning together. Um, I've worked with people who have no words at all, and an invitation into expression can be movement and gesture, or someone might respond with music and sound, um, and, or a few words to build a poem. Um, we really simply just have to learn the techniques that can help bring that expression out. And those techniques are really improvisation, saying yes and, asking beautiful questions that open expression, offering proof of listening that the person has been heard, opening yourself to wonder, and then also trying to connect that expression to the larger world and your larger community. I really love how this helps with people who are suffering that progressive memory loss, but overall, it's a really good lesson just in, in listening. What about the patients, those who are suffering the progressive memory loss? What's their reaction? People experiencing memory loss often say the same thing, that it's joyful, that it's fun, it's empowering. It creates a lab space almost where they can experiment with communication again and feel that ability to connect and make meaning, which can be very frustrating to feel when you're losing that. Um, one woman, after a year long project that we did using creative engagement to, if you can imagine, reimagine the story of Homer's Odyssey together. Um, she told us when I asked her, did you enjoy this project? She said, you know, this is the last important thing I'll do in my life. You are in Wisconsin, we're in New Jersey. Can people in New Jersey get to be a part of this program? One of the incredible things is that since 2011, Time Slips has been virtual. So our training and all of our resource materials are online. We have certified facilitators in 49 states now and 20 countries. We were just certifying someone in Kenya, which is very exciting. And it's really the other treat about the online network is that 
we really are nurturing their creativity. So joining the email list or coming to the website, you're, you're tapping into this incredible, inspiring international network of people inviting expression, making meaningful connection, and sharing it in really myriad and, and beautiful ways. So is there anything that people need to know if they want to, if they have a family member, a friend, and they're thinking, mm, I would like to start this, what are their first steps? I would guide people to the website, um, timeslips.org, hundreds of resources there, um, free and online training. I would also say I just in May have a book out called Creative Care that is available and walks people through those core elements that I described so quickly in, in the beginning of this interview. And then um, we also have a new program that we're launching in November called Engagement Parties. And it's, it's designed to destigmatize the experience of memory loss and caregiving and give these tools to, to family members and friends in very simple little engagement parties, as we call them, um, so that they can learn these techniques to connect again. Thank you, Anne. Now, as we fly through the galaxy, we have our own rising star as our person of the month. Wendy Lansky not only survived the 9-11 attack on the World Trade Center, but more recently, she willed herself to fight through and recover from COVID-19 which has reinforced her mission to support survivors. 9-11 was a beautiful day. It's what the weathermen called severe clear. Not a cloud in the sky, no wind, absolutely gorgeous. I went to my office. It was a regular Tuesday. I was ready to go to a normal, boring status meeting. And at 8.46 a.m., a plane hit my building and my life changed forever. I'm in a unique position because I'm a 9-11 survivor and a COVID-19 survivor. My husband was also affected. My husband was in the hospital with me for the 13 days that I was inpatient. Luckily, his case was less severe, but it was doubly terrifying because my husband is disabled and cannot care for himself if I'm out of commission. I did leave the hospital, and one of the things that I was quoted as saying to my doctors is that if Osama bin Laden didn't kill me, I'm not going down from a virus. And Rather than say, woe is me, I look at it as an opportunity to advocate. I advocate for victims of terrorism within the different organizations I'm a part of. I advocate for social justice and some of the issues that are in today's society. And I challenge people to say, what did you do to change the world? And what I mean by that is it doesn't have to be giant, it doesn't have to be impactful to thousands, but what did you do individually to change the world? I think if I had one message to all people about the current state of the pandemic is wear a mask, socially distance. You can get someone else sick. You can get a family member, a friend, even a stranger seriously ill. It costs nothing to wear a mask. It doesn't hurt you. Yes, it's a little uncomfortable on a hot day, but so are many things. But it's worth fighting for because it's worth living. You can still have your life no one is looking to stop your life. We're just looking to keep people alive. We've lost over 200,000 people to COVID and the numbers are climbing. There is a resurgence as we speak. So with some common sense and measures that are proven scientifically, we can help each other and we can spare other families and other people from going through this horrible experience. And just use common sense. Thank you, Wendy, for sharing your experience. It is a reminder why we all need to wear masks, wash our hands, and practice social distancing by staying at least six feet apart. And that does it for us. Thank you for watching another episode of Horizon HealthWorks. We would like to hear from you. Email us at horizonhealthworks at horizonblue.com. You can tweet us at horizonbcbsnj or find us on Facebook like Deirdre. Deirdre Kane from Ridgewood wrote us. Chef Pam from Atlantic City should be commended for doing great work. Teaching those kids about work and responsibility is a noble cause. I agree, Deirdre. Thanks for the note. And until next time, stay healthy, stay Jersey strong.